You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Why here? Looks like a good place. For what? Information. They won't know anything. Maybe they will. Hey, Steve's right. Look at all the trucks parked out front. I say we wait till we come to a town. The last sign said 35 miles. Let's go in. This is nowheresville. That's what we want, Freddy. Isn't it? We need to fit in, disappear. If we draw attention... I checked the map. It's mostly small towns. You think they won't notice us? They'll know we're not from... I said, let's go. Hiya, boys. Sit anywhere you like. Got some seats at the counter. Thanks. Three cold ones? Sure. Fine by me. How's your water? That all you want, blue eyes? I just wondered how your water supply is. Uh, pure as can be, down the mountain and over the dam. One double shot of H2O coming up, and, uh, yeah, two long necks. Uh, make it three. That's more like it, honey. Any, uh, towns around here? You bet. Stay on the highway and you'll hit Fairview. Lots of bikers stop at the motel just inside the city limits. Fairview. Nice place, is it? Oh, it's okay. Kind of quiet. Shops, schools, you know, not much to do. Sounds just right. Yeah? You boys looking to settle down? We might. No kidding. Well, what do you know? Saw your choppers out there. Figured you were just passing through. Hey, they have, uh, they have houses to rent in Fairview? He means pads, cribs. Some place to crash. Well, I couldn't say, but you could ask. Where? There's an office on Main, R.C. Jones Real Estate. Uh, park your choppers down the street, though. Don't want to give them a heart attack. We'll remember that. Here's from a bill for Annie. Sure thing. Coffee, burger, and a Coke. How you keep the change? Your tip. Why, thank you kindly, George. You come back and see me on your next run now. You know it, doll. You boys need menus. I got a burger basket special with fries. No, thanks. Sure. Strong young fellas like you. We don't eat. He means we already ate. What? That's it. We scarfed. This morning, we really chowed down. You, uh, you dig? Oh, I dig you loud and clear, Daddy-o. Say, where are you from, anyway? Not around here. Come on, let's go. Right. You got it, Steve. I mean, Big Daddy. Hey, you didn't touch your beers. That's okay. We're not thirsty. Here you are. Hold on. Something wrong? This ain't all for me. Isn't it enough? It's too much. Here, let me give you some change. Keep it. Yeah, for your tip. Is that cool? Well, now, that's mighty generous. <laughs> you boys come back and see me now, any time. Two specials, friend. Table four. Sure. Those boys stiff you? No, Harry, that's just it. They gave me $23 and, and 17 cents for three beers. Mm, maybe they're from another country. Well, maybe so, Harry. But wherever it is, it must be a long, long way from here. Three strangers on motorcycles dressed in black. We call them Steve and Scott and Fred, though their names aren't important. 
They look a bit dangerous, but in truth, they're just passing through, at least for now. They're on their way to a small town with tree-lined streets and white picket fences. A quiet town in the Midwest. You take a look in the eyes of these young men, and you'll see something deeply mysterious. Because they are most definitely not from around here. The truth is, they have arrived to lead us all into the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Black Leather Jackets, starring Marshall Allman with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Well, this must be the place. Amanda Drive. That's what Jones said. The old Anderson's house. Knock on the door and tell him we're here. I'll open the truck. Don't look like anyone lives here. The for rent sign's still up. That's because they're just moving in. Probably going to meet us. What if they don't show? Well, we wait an hour, put it in storage, cost them extra. Go on, knock. Okay. Nobody here. Keep it another try. Locked up tight as a drum. Well, well, looky here. A couple of creeps messing around our property. You the guys that live here? We ain't the fuzz, that's for sure. Got your stuff in the back. Open the door and we'll move it in. Hey, careful with the big cases. They're fragile. Whatever you say, pal. Somebody got the key to the house. Watch your feet, bozo. You're walking all over my grass. I might want to smoke it later. <laughs> Get it? Grass? Smoke? I still need the key. Well, we don't. Yeah, we don't need no stinking keys. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty? Yeah, I'll take care of it. Done. Hey, how'd you do that? He didn't even touch the doorknob. He just stared at it. Quit, John, and start humping boxes. But it was locked. I tried it myself. Ain't you got any furniture? Chairs, rugs, stuff like that? I said move. Now. Yeah, move it. Okay, Mac. Yeah, creep. Make like a leaf and shake it. <laughs> Come on, boys. We got work to do. Martha? Yes, dear? Here's that movie you wanted to see. Be right there. What in the... Something wrong with the TV? I don't know. Do you have it on the right channel? It's not the set. All the lights went dim for a second. Did they? I thought it was just the kitchen. It was the whole house. Anything still running in there? The dishwasher? No, the dishes are all put away. There it goes again. Maybe it's the antenna wire. I doubt it. It slipped loose once before. Well, that's easy enough to check. What do you see? It looks all right to me. Then what do you suppose? Martha, come over here. See something? The roof next door. There, against the moon. What is that? Looks like some kind of electrical device. Now, that wasn't there this morning, was it? No, the Andersons didn't leave anything. Must be something those men put up. Right, the three who moved in. Wouldn't that be just our luck? What? Not only are they motorcycle riding hoods, they're ham radio operators. Is that bad? You don't know what it does to TV reception. I have a good mind to go over there. Honey, please. Daddy? What is it, Ellen? I'm not sure. I had my radio on while I was studying, and all of a sudden, it began picking up these weird voices. What did I tell you? Ham operators. What's that? We can go without television for one night. Tomorrow, we'll find out what's to be done about it. First thing I'm going to do is see if they have a license. For what? Do you think you ought to? Those young men look so unfriendly. You mean the ones who moved in next door? Does anybody know their names? No, but I'll find out. 
I think two of them are brothers. Odd types to have in this neighborhood. They don't really fit in somehow. The other one has blue eyes. How do you know? Uh, they were unloading the truck when I came home from school. Lots of boxes. Electrical equipment, probably. And these long silver metal things like... like giant tanks or capsules or something. You stay away from them, young lady. You make it sound like an order. It is. But you don't even know them. Your father's just concerned for your safety, dear. Go upstairs and finish your homework. <sighs> I'm not going to wait till morning. I'm going over there right now. Stu. Hello? Anybody here? Yeah. What's it to you? Hello there. I'm Stu Tillman from next door. No kidding. Been having a little trouble with my electricity flickering off and on. You boys wouldn't be ham radio operators by any chance, would you? <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Big Daddy here wants to know what's so funny. Yeah, ain't that a crack up? Who are you boys, anyway? We're monsters, Daddy-o. <laughs> what's that supposed to mean? Yeah, we got a lease on the place. That okay with you? Where did you come from? From outer space. Woo! <laughs> Take us to your leader. <laughs> all, right, all right, now listen. Uh, I don't have to stand here and listen. Hey, watch your step, Daddy-o. It's pretty dark in here. Hey, yeah, you might trip and fall. Hey, yeah, you might trip and fall What and are you doing? Head. What are you doing? Hey, you better keep it cool, mister. Oh, he'll disintegrate you with his ray gun. I, you, take your hands off of me. <laughs> ah, look at him go. Stop it. <laughs> hey, 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 this cat can really dance. A real cool hey. cat. Yeah, move it. I said let go of me. Go, daddy, go. Ah, uh, not to worry. Spaceman won't hurt Earth creature. Ooh, Earth creature. Crazy man. Real crazy. All right. I'm calling the police. Then I'm calling my lawyer. No, you're not. That would be uncool. Definitely. Just you watch. You're some kind of hoodlums. Cool it. The police probably have warrants for your arrest. They'll be very interested to know where you are. I told you to cool it. Stay away from me. Look in my eyes. You're going to be plenty sorry for this. Just, just wait till I... Forget it. What? Forget everything. There. Feel better now? Yes. Better. Stu? Stu, I was worried. Did something happen? Martha? What happened over there? Nothing. Nothing at all. Those men next door, did they do something to you? No. But you were going to talk to them about the television interference. Oh, that. Well, did you find out anything? It's... not them. They're nice boys. Three very nice boys. Definitely. Morning, Mom. Gotta go. Oh, no. Not till you have your breakfast. But I'll miss the bus. Then you'll just have to walk. The exercise will do you good. I can't walk in these shoes. Here, I'm eating my toast. See? And your juice. Where's Dad? He decided to sleep in. I think he's coming down with something. Well, kiss him for me. Bye. Not so fast, young lady. I've got some scrambled eggs here. <sighs> that girl... Darn you, anyway. Hey, Trouble? You see that bus? Yes. I mean, yeah. I checked it out. What gives? 
drove off right in front of me. It's a game with them. They just love to make people suffer. Why would they do that? Beats me. Definitely. Uh, uncool. Just thank your lucky stars you don't have to depend on buses to get around. Stars are lucky? It's just an expression. <laughs> I, I understand a great deal about constellations. That is, the nature of galactic structure. But as to... Huh? I mean, I dig stars the most. They're really cool. So, they're lucky? That's a gas. So are you. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, one minute you talk like a professor, and the next minute you sound like a... What did they call them? Beatnik or something. Uh, thanks. You're a real cool chick. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> well, why do you try to talk that way? Sounds like you've been watching too many old movies. I have? I mean, I have. Before I came here, I made a study of popular culture. Music, motion pictures, satellite, television. <laughs> You're a trip, you know that? Trip? Meaning to travel to another destination. Yeah, I believe I understand. You need a ride? Well, you aren't going past the school by any chance, are you? Uh, I could. With me on the back of your motorcycle? Uh, why not? It can carry two passengers. That would definitely be cool. Well, there's a first time for everything. <laughs> Come on, little lady. Hold tight. Uh, tightly, I mean. Uh, up tight. Out of sight. Here we go. Just look at that. What is it? She's on the back of his motorcycle, our daughter. Come away from the window. I told her to keep away from them. She missed her bus and he offered her a ride, Stu. I'm sure that's all there is to it. I could have given her a ride. But you're not a handsome young man in a leather jacket, dear. Here! What? You can stop here. I don't see any school. It's on the other side of the park. Then why are we You've stopping? You got me here so early I thought I'd walk. The park's so pretty in the morning. How much time do you have? Mm, my watch says 8.30. Class isn't until 9. Oh. <laughs> Would you like to take a walk? Uh, sure. That bench over there is my special place. We could sit for a while if you want. <clears throat> okay. It's nice here, isn't it? I guess. I sit here sometimes and think. Try to figure things out. Like what? Oh, I don't know. For one thing... Did you know you've lived next door to me for over a month and you've never even said hello? <laughs> hello. <laughs> My name's Ellen, by the way. I'm Scott. Hi, Scott. So, where are you from? Why do you ask? I just mean, where did you live before? Yeah, it's hard to describe. A long way from here. What city? I doubt that you've ever heard of it. Could be. Geography is one of my worst subjects. <laughs> Did you graduate already? Graduate? Have you finished school? Yes. Ten years ago. Ten years? You're not that old. I'm, I'm older than you think. My people don't show their age. My family's the same way. My grandmother lived to be 90, and you'd have taken her for 60 right up to the day she died. That's beautiful. It is, isn't it? She was such a sweet, happy person. Uh, not that. I mean... 
your hair. My hair? The way the, the sun's shining through it. I've never seen anything so beautiful. Now you're putting me on. Uh, uh <laughs> putting on? Teasing me? Don't you know that? What old movies have you been watching? I don't know. I like the wild one. It's our favorite. Never heard of that one. May I touch it? Your hair, it's like gold. Thank you. I'd better be getting to school. Uh, already? It's getting late. No, it's not. How do you know? Look at your watch. You're right. It says it's still 8.30. How can that be? Has it stopped? No. See? Time is relative. It can slow down or even stand still. It can? Hey, uh, take the long way. So we can talk some more. All right. Tell me more about yourself. <laughs> okay. But only if you walk on this side of me. Why? Uh, so I could see the sun shining through your hair. time. I know that. Where is he? He got delayed. He'll be here. I'm not interested in excuses. Neither is the controller. We could try to pick up his image with the eye. Don't try. Do it. There he is, on the screen. Looks like he's walking in a park with a human female. Has he no sense of time? What do we do? Proceed without him. We can't. The controller told us. It's my responsibility. I'll make the decision. Sir. Reporting in, sir. Be at ease. Where's your brother? We can no longer trust him. What has he done? He's formed an attachment for one of the beings here. What sort of attachment? I'm not sure yet. A kind of alliance. He's with a young human in spite of our orders. Continue without him. I'm sure he's on his way now. I said continue. We have been in touch with all units. Good. The second wave has landed successfully and are now concealed as planned. With the arrival of the third wave, we will be in key positions throughout the continent. Excellent. The locals, are they suspicious? Not a bit, sir. They're a stupid race, exactly as our research told us. An inferior breed given to hatred, cruelty, making war, and killing one another because of greed. The universe can well do without them. You will receive your instructions for the final move in a few Earth days. Very well, sir. I'll tell brother as soon as he gets here. No time for that. We have to bring him in now. Ellen? Hmm? Are you warm enough? Yes. It's a beautiful night. You can pull the blanket over your legs if you like. I'm fine, really. Just lying here, looking at the stars. The constellations are very strange here. Not as I was taught them. Scott, can I ask you a question? Sure. You won't get mad? <laughs> I couldn't get mad at you. Well, where did you come from, really? Does it matter? I suppose it doesn't, but you're so... Different from anybody I've ever known. Is that bad? No, not really. Tell me the truth. You're an exchange student, aren't you? At the college, from some place you'd rather not talk about. Only in a manner of speaking. Ellen, you like me, don't you? You know that. Very much. Very much. 
Except when you do your Marlon Brando impersonation. <laughs> Will you want roses or something? <laughs> ah, come on, I thought I did a pretty good job. We studied your motion pictures. That's just it. You must have looked at nothing but old movies. People don't talk like that anymore. Well, what about the clothing? Oh, don't go changing that. Your leather jacket is way cool. At least we got something right, huh? You got a lot right. Trust me. Alan, do you know the word love? Of course, silly. Everybody does. What an odd question. What's odd about it? I mean, bringing it up at a time like this. Why would you? No reason. Oh. It's, it's just the word that's all over your newspapers, and your magazines, your music, your television. We encountered it all the time. We? Who is we? That's not important. Uh, this is a planet filled with hate, Ellen. Hate, violence, mistrust, bigotry. I don't, I don't know how someone like you survived this long. Me? I'm no different from most people. I haven't seen a report on anyone like you. A report? Scott, you talk in riddles. Sometimes you make me feel like an insect under a microscope. I'm sorry. I, I didn't I didn't mean to. Please, I'd, I'd like to go home. Why? You've been lying to me. You're wrong. Don't make it any worse. I don't know why or what it is you're trying to hide, but I know you're not what you seem. And what if I'm not? Do you think you're in any position to judge me? Any of you? I said I want to go home. I'm truly sorry, Ellen. You can believe that or not. I, I, I guess I expected too much. Where have you been? I told you, I was riding around. Every day for the last five or six days? Yesterday when I sent you to the ship for food? Or last night when you were supposed to be on guard? You think I don't know? I've had the eye on you every minute. If you know, then why are you asking me? I told them before we came you were too young. You'd lose your head, run into situations you couldn't handle. There's too much at stake. I, I've done no harm. Haven't told her a thing yet, huh? No. Well, now you won't have the chance. We're too close to finishing this mission. Yeah, well, you better go to the control room. Your master's calling. You're a master, too, and don't forget it. From here on out, you're just along for the ride. You're not a good enough risk. The controller. I heard. Report. Bacteria Unit 59 reporting in. The test has been an unqualified success. Good. Unit 70 through 100 have reported the same result. What is your time estimate? 30 minutes to the reservoir. Approximately 24 hours for the bacteria to multiply to saturation. How soon before you see results? Within 30 hours, we should witness 50% fatalities. I estimate a total of 48 hours before total extermination. Have you coordinated with other units in your area? We have. And the result? There are 29 bacteria units near the water supplies in this state. We should reach complete contamination of the population within two days. Very well. Begin Operation Invasion Phase 2 at once. Yes, sir. At once. So, oh. the time has come. Ah, brother. You've decided to do your duty. It's not what I was told would happen. Of course it is. Not this way. A portion of the population was to be saved. For study, if nothing else. The controller's word is final. Yeah, well not if I can help it. Where are you going? 
We've got to stop him. Doesn't matter now. He's too late to stop it. Who's down there? Calm down. Now? I've got to talk to you. It's late. This is important. All right. Brother! You're there in the bushes! I can see you! Go back to the house and wait, Scott. You're making a mistake. These people aren't worth it. Scott, what's going on? Ellen, you've got to get away from here. What is it? You're in danger. I don't understand. Something terrible is going to happen here. Many people are going to die. I want you to go away as far as possible. I can take you where you'll be safe. You're frightening me, Scott. Please. What do you mean? What's going to happen? I can't, I can't tell you that. And, and it, it wouldn't matter if I did. Look, we've got to leave right now. Are you trying to scare me into running away with you? Uh, Ellen, listen to me. In 24 hours, every man, woman, child, cat, dog, anything else alive is going to be dead. Don't. Don't, please. No, not just in this town. All over your country. All over your world. My world? It's your world, too? No, it's not. What do you mean? Scott, who are you? Look up. Look up. We came from out there, Ellen. From beyond those stars. There, there, there are thousands of us here on Earth right now. Our people, we, we need room. We're, we're, and we're going to set up colonies here? I don't believe We've you. We've had bacteria units in every country on this planet for months. They have enough to poison the drinking water of the entire world's population. Scott, I'm going to walk with you over to your house. No, it's too late. Even if it is, I think we'd better wake your friends and let them get you to a doctor. No, you don't understand. You haven't seen, okay? The leader, the... The controller speaks to us from a giant television screen. All we ever see is his head. A, a metallic mask with slits for eyes, a nose, a mouth, but no lips. And his voice, that's... that's uh, Scott, I love you, but you're not well. You're... Oh, Scott. Ellen! 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 All right, Ellen, what's this all about? Oh, Daddy, I don't know what to do. You can start by telling me what went on out there. He woke me, throwing stones at my window. He said he had to see me. Daddy, I think he's lost his mind. He's never been this way before tonight. He was almost raving. Exactly what did he say? Crazy things. Th that he's some kind of spaceman, and they're taking over the Earth, and we're all going to die. <sighs> Poor boy. We'd better get him help. Ellen? Why aren't you in bed? Stu? Hold it. I'll explain everything. Sheriff Station? Deputy Harper? Let me speak to the sheriff, please. Um, Sheriff Farley's on vacation. Sir, can I help you? My name is Stuart Tillman. I live at 11575 Amanda Drive. Yes, Mr. Tillman. There's a mentally disturbed boy living next door. Is that right? And before he does any harm to himself or anyone else, I think he ought to be picked up. Honey, what's happened? Oh, Mother. There, there, now. What makes you think he's uh, mentally disturbed? He's been scaring my daughter with some kind of Man from Mars story. Claims he's part of an invasion force that's going to take over the world or some such nonsense. All right, Mr. Tillman, uh, let's just stay right where you are. I will take it from here. In fact, I know exactly what to do. Definitely. Hey, Red? Yeah? Yeah, we got uh, control on Amanda Drive? Sure do. We'll be right there, Mr. Tillman. Thank you. Are the police coming? Yes, in a few minutes. That's good. Now, will somebody please tell me what's wrong? Sure, in a minute. Only... Only what? I wonder what he meant by control. Yes. 
Please, sir. This I, is I, an unauthorized transmission. No, sir, sir, I beg you to listen to me. You may speak. What we're doing is wrong. You question my judgment? No, we should save these creatures, not exterminate them. It's it's true. They, they, they murder and hurt one another and are subject to unreasonable hate and prejudice. But the murderers, the cruel ones, uh, are, are the brutes found in any race. Th these people have capacity for love. I know it. Our research disproves that. They are a world of angry, frightened people. No, no, I tell you. I have lived among them. They learn love from their God, and they teach it to their children. There is more of love than hate here. There's no need to kill them. It's too late. Not if you order the plan to stop. For you, a defector, a traitor to your own kind. No, no, I'm not, I'm not. You are a traitor. This transmission is ended. Here they are now. Are you sure this is necessary? Yes. Please, Daddy, tell them not to hurt him. Ah, Mr. Tillman? How are you? I'm uh, Deputy Sheriff Harper. This is Deputy Miller. Evening, sir. Come in, please. Now, uh, what about this neighbor boy? Tell him, Ellen. I... I, I don't know where to start. All right, you know, your, uh, your father said he was mentally ill. What made you think that? Ellen! Ellen, please listen to me. There's no more time. Scott, I'm sorry. I didn't know what else to do. No, 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 no. Come on in, son. Uh, just tell me all about it. Don't listen to him. He's one of us. He's part of the advanced units. No, come on. Calm down. What kind of unit was that? No, get out, Ellen. Run as fast as you can. It's too late for me. It's coming. It's almost here. Oh, Scott, you're only making it worse. Who are they? What have you done? And they told me you were ill, son, so I, I took the necessary precautions. These men are from the hospital. Now, now just stand right there. Stay away from me! Uh, we're gonna put this around you so you don't hurt yourself. Don't touch me! No, not a straight jacket. It's for his own good. Uh, got him! Got him! Uh, get us out of the jacket off first! Get him! Get him! Easy get him now, get him. boy. No! no. Don't fight it, son. <laughs> That'll only make it more difficult. No, 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 no! You don't understand. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Listen to me, please, please. No, no, please, no. No, no. You'll see that he gets help. Don't worry, folks. We'll take good care of him. And someday, I'm sure he'll thank you. You have a good evening now. Oh, they left his leather jacket. Can I... Keep it for him until he gets out? I don't see why not, honey. It might be a while, though. Oh, Mom. What am I going to do? There's nothing you can do, sweetheart. Except pray. It's for the best. You'll see. Now, come and sit down. I'll get you a glass of water. Portrait of an American family on the eve of an invasion from outer space. Of course, we know it's only fiction. And yet, you might think twice when you drink your next glass of water. Be sure it's 100% pure and, and not imported directly from the Twilight Zone. We'll return to the Twilight Zone in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone related info and merchandise plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop twilightzoneradio.com 
Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD. Or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. Black Leather Jackets, starring Marshall Allman with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Earl Hamner Jr. Heard in the cast were Elizabeth Lido, Jason Bradley, Christian Stolte, Doug James, Fernette Lebo, Jeff Lupitan, Roger Mueller, Meg Falcon, Vince Amari, Alex Sopiner, Carl Amari, Kurt Nabig, and Jason Mallow. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors, and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>